United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Did I drop something or just garbage? Uh, I don't know if we are supposed to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, but it's good practice for next week. Uh, <laughs> Clerk Spencer, call the roll, please. Hesse. Here. Guttenkopf. Here. Leader. Here. Dunn. Absent. Graham. Here. Polumsky. Here. York. Here. Hipskin. Absent. Healy. Here. Levin. Here. Kennedy. Here. Morley. Here. Wagner. Here. Mulliner. Here. Out present, two absent. All right, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this evening we're going to start off uh, before we get into our regular agenda with public comment. Uh, Clerk Spencer reports that no one has signed in for public comment, but if anyone does wish at this time to make any public comment, uh, please just rise and approach the microphone uh, on that side of the room. Uh, please uh, state your name, your address, and uh, you'll have three minutes. Thank you. Keely Miller Witzel, I live at 277 Berkeley. Um, I'm here just to express my opinion regarding the proposed Han Street project. Um, I just read that it could be five or six stories tall, and I feel that is too tall for the area. I have a degree in architecture and took many urban planning classes in college, so I do have a little background um, and not just an aesthetic opinion. Um, I feel something around three or four, three or four floors would be more conducive to the adjacent townhomes um, in that area. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? I just uh, actually, uh, we don't really have announcements here, but the Zoning and Planning Commission will be addressing that uh, request for increased height, I believe, on January 24th. All right. All right. Uh, any other public comment? Addison Street. Addison Street. Addison Street. My mistake. Sorry about that. First mistake. <laughs> All right. Um, Let's get into it. Uh, we're, the next item is the review of requests for proposals on the Han Street Development Project, which is a continued discussion from November. Uh, is that going to be led by Assistant City Manager Kopp? Yes, it is. All right, Mr. Kopp. Thank you. A lot has to be reviewed for the people here on the 26th of November, but there, I know there's some other people interested in this RFP, so I'm going to quickly go over some of the stuff we went over last time and then some of the changes that we talked about at the last meeting. Uh, a couple assumptions before we move into this. One is that uh, Elmhurst will have control of all 10 parcels uh, we're talking about in the Han Street development. Uh, we'll have the Tracy Cross final report, which is due in Monday. Um, starting off here, the executive summary of the RFP, the reinforcement of connection between the central business district and the north downtown business district are paramount importance in the development is subject properties, that that connection between the downtown and the north business is important. Proposed development of the properties for first floor retail backed by a residential component, but the city is also going to accept any highest and best use of these parcels proposals from any developer. And a minimum of 100 public parking spaces plus the parking that's required for the development itself. And that is to replace the 100 parking spots that are out there right now that are public parking. Those shows, this is the showing of the 10 parcels we're talking about in the Hon Street development. It goes both north and south of Hon Street between York and Addison. C4A, it's a C4A district, and some of the requirements of that is any development needs to go through the planning review process, zoning and planning, city council, DPZ committee, the whole process for anything in the C4A district. <coughs> Does not mandate any building or parking setbacks, so you can go property line to property line. And some of the minimum bulk standards as it is today, it's a maximum height of 45 feet on the York Street side, but goes down to a 35 foot height on the Addison Street side to try to blend into the uh, residential that's there right now. Uh, the retail is required two parking spots for every thousand square foot of gross floor area, a floor area ratio of 4.0, and a 1,500 square foot of lot area per dwelling unit, so it's about 29 dwelling units per acre. The total site is 2.77 acres, about 120,000 square feet. Uh, like I was talking about parking solutions that uh, provide a public parking component of at least 100 spots to replace the ones that are there. You know, uh, underground parkings could be considered, should be considered as part of the overall plan, especially associated with the residential component. 
and the parking is going to be an issue on the, on the site. And then archi architecturally sensitive parking design integrated into surrounding properties. Objective requirements, quality architecture. Again, design must be characterized with visual interest of high quality design, materials, site amendments. In 2006, we had a downtown plan with the city adopted, and that has building and design guidelines and what those incorporate in the proposed plan. Again, the new structure should further enhance the, the character of the downtown and uh, complement the residential land uses on the west side of Addison Street. And then there should be, there should be um, comprehensive building facades on all four sides, no, no back end or windowless sides, so all four sides have a nice architectural finish to them. Sustainability, the city's looking to incorporate environmentally sensitive and sustainable components in the, in the development of the plans, improve water use, use of all resources uh, in the construction and design. And in the bold there, those are two things we talked about at the last meeting that are now as part of the RFP, and that's a proposal, right now he's at Dupuy County Stormwater, looking for proposals that exceed current codes of stormwater management will looked upon favorably. So any type of, uh, type of creative or um, better use of the resources is, is going to be looked favorable upon. And the universal and inclusive design are also uh, would look favorably upon. Um, looking at you know, inclusive design, you can have design that's going to be inclusive or exclusive. We're looking for something that's more inclusive. And, then, and at the design phase, it's, our research will show that if you're doing a design phase, the cost isn't that great to include that. And that's just going really above and beyond what is required. And, and uh, as far as like uh, uh, universal or inclusive design, uh, handicap accessibility, and that kind of stuff like that. So I think any proposal that includes that in the design phase will be looked at favorably. Pedestrian amenities, again, they want that connection, the pedestrian connection from the, from the business district in the south up to the north business district. And now as we look at TIF 4, even looking at, is there a way to make that connection to as we go, as we go north on York Street? And then how the pedestrian experience relates to the building and the lighting, the windows, and uh, how it relates to the landscaping and other tangible items. So the pedestrian experience is important, so is the open space, um, like interactive open space, a public open space for development produce viable options for pedestrians to visit, gather, and interact with others, includes seating, lighting, and then uh, just this bold was added to it too, it, it, to be visible and inviting. You know, that's something we're looking for. So it's not hidden somewhere that people walking up to the site know that that's an open space and it's welcoming to the, to anybody walking up to the site. And again, public art could be, is a welcome component also if a developer feels there's an opportunity to use some kind of public art, sculpture, fountains, and murals, and, those, and that such. And then we talked about, again, the 2006 downtown plan. We're looking for that compliance with the 2006 plan complies with all Elm Elmer's codes, ordinances, including zoning, building, and life safety, unless our zoning relief is pursued. And then ground floor, York Street frontage shall be devoted to retail and uses. And then again, with the 2006 plan, some other uh, elements on that are rehabilitation, new construction to respect the existing scale of downtown. And it talks about two and four story buildings will continue to be prominent, but it also talks about taller buildings may be appropriate adjacent to major intersections or at other selected locations. And then new one-story buildings are too small and, and won't be effective in as far as the street wall effect. And so other considerations, as was with the last time that RFP here, is that we encourage any applicant to pursue opportunities for partnerships with adjoining property owners if the parting results in a feasible a project that could be a better project and any type of zoning relief that we look for, it's a responsibility of the applicant to finance and secure all vari uh, variations, continual uses, and permits. And again, we're looking for proposals that incorporate the, the uh, building and design guidelines that were adopted in 2006 by the city. <coughs> I look at, um, there's dates in the RFP, and they're all based on an issue date of the RFP of February 1, 2013, and then somewhere in July of 2013. And it just brought to my attention today that actually the first day I had on there for reviewing proposals was May 6, and that I think is the night we, we uh, swear in all the new um, aldermen. So that'll have to be moved out a couple weeks. Everything else will probably move out too. But we're looking at basically if we put out on February 1st, ask for proposals back around April 15th, 
And then once a new s council seated, they start doing the presentations. And uh, applicants may submit more than one proposal if they feel there's more alternatives or better alternatives. Um, but we're willing to accept more than one from any one developer. And the last the discussion last time was about the financial requirements that are asked in the RFP. There was questions of whether they're, they're what we're really looking for. And so uh, our EDC, our Economic Development Commission, has a number of financial people on it and financial analysts, and we asked them what was the wording that was in there. Was it okay? They, they tweaked it a little bit here and there, as you'll see in the proposal are highlighted, but basically they said what we were asking for would be satisfactory. So they just want a little more detail on it. So when we get the, when we get the responses back, we have a better, a better ability to analyze what is, is presented. And the selection process is going to go through six stages. We'll submit the proposal, then we'll do some evaluation with uh, city staff, mayor, and city council with the city council approval. Then we'll do public presentation interviews for the city council, and mayor and city council review and select the finalists. And then we'll ask finalists to come back. And it, when the finalists come back, there'll be more detail as far as what we're requiring or requesting in the RFP. And then we'll. Uh, interview the finalists, we'll do presentations, and the city council will then authorize the staff to negotiate a public-private development agreement with the chosen uh, applicant. We talked last time about how we would rank, how we do the ranking and how the evaluation will be done. There's a, a copy on the dais of the survey that was sent out. It was sent out to all the elected, the six elected officials at the time and the city manager are the ones. One did not come back, so we ended up with 16 responses. We basically just averaged them out and then the, for simplicity's sake tried to take those numbers on a hundred point point basis with the averages that were there to come up with, to come up with these numbers uh, as far as the, the weighting for each for each so there are other ways to look at it but this was a way that if you look at the way the, the responses came back uh, like economic impacts were about twice as much as the other ones that got 10 points so but there are, there are other ways to look at how we would do that. But here's the here's things we decided we would, we would rate it on. That's parking solutions, quality architecture, pedestrian amenities, and open space, consisting of the downtown plan, the site layout and land use, the qualifications of the applicants, economic impacts, and then sustainability. And that is just the survey that went out and, and the, um, the different averages for the different uh, criteria. And what the yellow one is there is we took the high and low number out to try to take any really far outliers out. As you see, the numbers really didn't change after we did that, but those, that's basically where the numbers are. And then the bottom line is that by trying to take those numbers around them all off to get 100% or 100 point total, those are some numbers that were put in there. So I'm going to have more discussion on how, how exactly we want to do that, but that was one suggestion how to do it. And the selection of the finalists, like I said, once we choose the ones that will be the finalists after the first presentations, we'll ask, the, we'll ask finalists to come back. We'll give them some time to do it, but we're looking for a little more detail. We're looking for a 3D uh, model. It could be electronic rendering also. Those work fine. But more detail on floor plan, proposed detail on school impacts, imp economic impacts, um, purchase price of city, of a city-owned property. <laughs> cost of the construction of each of the, of the 100 parking spots, just to, for the financial analysis. So um, <clears throat> once we get down to the finalists, we'll ask them for more detail, we'll, we'll review them. And what we're looking at right now is a process, use the same ranking system, but on the finalists with the more detail, they'll be able to get a better idea of all those different categories. And then there's this disclaimer that the city's not obligated to accept any, any proposal, that if we don't feel any for, we can reject any proposal that's submitted, and we, or we can negotiate the terms of a public-private development agreement with any of the parties as the city council chooses to do so. So I, the only thing is, um, if there's any questions on the changes that were made, they were all highlighted and notated. So if you have any questions, we can talk about those specifically. But the one thing that we think we need to discuss is the evaluation process and how we're going to weight those numbers and what process we want to use for that. You ready? Okay. Um, Alderman Kolumski. Thank you, Mayor Levin. I <coughs> wanted to know if your questions about, I want to say, character of architecture. You know, we talked about quality. Was that 
adequately addressed in the update here? Um, I think that my concern would, uh, would fall still under the quality of the architecture category. Um, so I don't know that a separate category would be required as long as we all feel that that is one that addresses it. Alderman Morley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank city staff for making some of the changes that we requested and also gathering the information on the survey. Um, I would say a couple of things as it relates to this. Uh, for anybody who's listening, any of the developers or residents, I think one of the key parts is paragraph three under the executive summary. The proposed development of this property is for first floor retail back with a residential component. The city will also consider any other proposal that provide the highest and best use of these parcels. Um, I think that establishes a couple of things. Um, first of all, I, I certainly agree with it. Um, I believe that uh, some sort of residential backed component uh, is a way to increase our tax base. But the other thing I want to point out um, is that that's as far as we go in terms of defining it. And we actually even ask the folks who will be responding to potentially be even more creative with the second line that we will consider any other proposal. I think it's very important that we keep an open mind at this point. Certainly, uh, the other thing to consider is the Tracy Cross report, which I know is available online. I've lived in town long enough to 100% uh, support the additional parking. Um, I think that's something that we still face. Uh -huh. And then finally, I would say that, and city staff included it as an attachment, the building designs that were adopted in 2006 will be key. Um, I am looking forward to getting this project off the ground. And uh, last question I have for Mr. Kopp uh, is, I know that you have an ongoing list about how many people have expressed interest at this point. Uh, the list that we sent out the other day had 22 on there. There was one double on there, but I think we're like 25 or 26 now. We had a couple more over uh, at the end of last week. Follow up, Mr. Mayor, if I may, please. Uh, two other questions, or one point and one question. Um, my recollection, last time we went through this six years ago, uh, I think we had upwards in around 80 developers to, who we at least sent out to. And then my only other point as it relates specifically to the survey, I think they all have merit but it looks like we have a consensus that the most important one is that it needs to make economic sense for the city. And I agree with that. As far as, as far as the RFP goes, I mean, our thought is we have people that are requesting the RFP, we keep an Italian list on that, but we want, it, we want to advertise it. And I know that Tracy Cross Associates said he has a number of developers that'd be interested in this, but we want to get it out there, so um, we'll advertise it also. Thank you. Alderman Leader. Has the, uh, Final written, when is the final written report from Tracy Cross going to be available? They told me uh, January 21st or 22nd. When is that, Mike? I'm January 21st, either next Monday or Tuesday. That's what next they. Next Monday or Tuesday. Right. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Bram. Thank you. Um, assistant, assistant City Manager Cop, sorry, I'm getting over a cold here. Um, if you can go back to the slide um, titled Application Selection Process. Ah, there we go. Um, can you dive a little bit deeper into what is meant here? Um, for example, number two being evaluation of proposals by city staff with mayor and city council approval. Is this something as a committee of the whole that we'll be doing, um, discussing the various proposals and would there be public input at that time or at a later date? I, I, I would envision that originally the city staff would go through all the proposals, depending how many we get. If we get a lot of them that some just might not qualify. They don't have the backing to be able to do it or the proposal doesn't meet the RFP. So we'd flush those out. And then you know, the city council then would make recommendations as far as which ones that are left would be getting a presentation. I don't know if that every one of them, depending on the number we have that are qualified, we may allow all of them to do a presentation if you guys choose to do so or just choose the number that we think is the appropriate number. Okay, so what you're telling, what I'm hearing at least at this time, and I won't go through the rest of the bullet items then, is that this isn't defined to the point of us saying when it will be public, when it will be discussed by the city council alone, et cetera. Is that what I'm hearing? That each of these bullet items aren't, aren't clear if, you know, like I said, number two, if it will be covered by city staff first and then being discussed in the committee of the whole meeting or not? Yeah, I think that's what we're, we're proposing is that we do that. We flush out ones that we don't think would qualify for the RFP, and then the city council would choose the ones that would do the presentation. 
So then city, city staff will be providing justification on why that decision was made that developer A, B, or C didn't make the cut. Correct. Okay, and I don't recall what slide this was on, but I heard you mention and I started taking notes. Um, you made mention of taller buildings might uh, be justified for major intersections. Um, I'm a little bit confused by that statement and I don't know again where it is in the slides because for this proposal, at least what I would define as a major intersection, there is no major intersection. So is there, it's, it's a, clarify it, that statement? Yeah, right, it's, it's out of the 2006 downtown plan. Those four bullet points came out of it when it talked about bulk uh, in the two, 2006 downtown plan and it talked about the heights of buildings in it and what they would recommend or what was recommended at that time, but there was a caveat. It talks about four-story buildings, 45 feet on York side, 35 on the Edison Street side, but it said taller buildings may be appropriate at specific locations. It doesn't say what locations. It says major intersections and other selected locations. But So in this well, case, you're highlighting this from the standpoint of York versus Addison side of the street? Is that, or? Well, I, I think York and North is a, is, is a major intersection, so. I would agree, but that doesn't encompass this proposal. To my understanding, York and North Avenue, right? No, the corner itself doesn't. Just okay, thank you. Alderman Pezza. Thank you, Mayor Levin. I have about five or six questions, <coughs> if I may. Proceed. Uh, first, I just want to be sure that all interested parties, like whatever it was, 22 of them, were made aware. I see some are here this evening. Was everyone made aware of this meeting yes. this evening? I, the right. email went out. It said that we're having this meeting tonight, but they, they could not make it. It will be online tomorrow afternoon. They can watch the video. Perfect. Thank you. Um, also, were all interested developers given the exact <laughs> same information and handled exactly and responded to the exact same way with the same information? Some, uh, not exactly the same, because some just asked to be put on a list, some asked to come in for meetings, and if we had a meeting with them, we gave them the actual, the, I mean, we didn't give them a lot of information other than we showed them the map of the parcels. Plus, while they were here, we gave them the, show them TIF 4 maps, opportunities up on Grand Af Avenue, opportunities at other locations in Elmhurst, so it was a sort of a sales pitch for Elmhurst, not just the Han Street area, but we did discuss the Han Street parcels and where we're going with it, but no, no, the RFP was not shared with anybody until it gets finalized. Okay. Um, and in regard to that, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little confused because I have heard mention and I thought we referenced somewhere in one of these slides um, working with the adjacent property owners. Is that, has that been thrown out there? Is that part of the mix, the potential use of CVS Panera? or is that completely off limits or how is that being addressed? Oh, it's, it's just out there that if somebody, I mean, it's any adjacent parcels. If someone thinks that they can make a better deal and they can acquire any of the properties, CVS going south, uh, you know, the gas station or point, I don't know if, those, if that's a, a reasonable or not, but we just throw it out there that if anybody thinks they can do a better project, if they could acquire CVS and Panera and make a better project out of it, we're, we're willing to listen to it. I, isn't, so the city's not involved in that piece of it or connecting anybody to them or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, regarding the open space, I know we have a brief little description of what we say open space is, <coughs> but I would like to see in the final RFP probably a more comprehensive idea of what open space really is, if we can somehow describe that. I know for Crescent Court, the open public space is pretty much a ditch behind the building. Um, it's not what I would consider attractive open public space, so I'd hate to see that happen again in this really heart of our downtown. Um, and what was the other question? The proposals that staff rejects, would those be available for aldermen to review if they had questions about them? Or would they sure. be I think more of it, when we say is that if it doesn't qualify, it doesn't meet the requirements of the RFP, I think that's more, right. more you know, they got a certain elements of the RFP that have to be addressed. Like if someone comes in, they, they, don't, they don't provide any, hundred, any parking spaces, then we're going to say that doesn't meet the RFP. And okay. just that type of thing like that is what I, my thoughts are. And I think the last one is regarding the whole uh, Tracy Cross report component. Um, I mean, all I've heard actually is from staff that 
you know, kind of leaning on that, but I've never heard us as a whole council discuss whether or not we support or approve that Tracy Cross concept, but yet it is being used as a component in this RFP. Um, after we receive the final next week, will we then obviously receive the final update from Tracy Cross and as a council discuss it and vote on whether or not we believe that is what we're telling people we want as part of this RFP or how will that work? Sure, I mean, that's fine. I mean, we just looked at, we went through what Tracy Cross did, his recommendation, and we wrote the RFP based on that with the, uh, with the option that anybody can propose anything they want, we'll accept any proposal. But the city council needs to finally approve the, the RFP, which I think they should, and that's what we'll do. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. City Manager Baskin. Uh, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but Tracy Cross is not scheduled to make another presentation to the council. This is just a written report That's of correct. what he already presented, That's correct. correct? Okay, I just wanted to clarify because we get a copy. you had asked that. Thank you. Alderman Pisser, are you, uh, is that please get all your questions thank you, out? Yes. Thank you. Alderman Gutenkoff? Um, thank you. I, I, I have several comments to make, but I, I just wanted to kind of pick up on this. Um, discussion about the Tracy Cross report that even though they, d they did present, we haven't had their final written document. And so I do think it's very important that we vet that. And, sure. and, and I agree that it should be a committee of the whole meeting. It gives <coughs> us a real opportunity to look at it in writing and dig into it. So I think that'll be very beneficial. Um, Alderman Peza and I have an email list and we like to spend time speaking with residents who are on that list. Um, we sent out an email seeking some feedback, particularly because we um, think it's very important, I think it's very important, that we involve residents in conversations about um, these kinds of projects that are publicly funded or that involve public, um, the public body, and give them an opportunity to weigh in on how this is gonna affect them or um, what they think it might look like or what they think might be the solution that is most appropriate for Elmhurst. And we received several responses, and I'd like to just read a few comments from some of the responses of people who couldn't attend the meeting tonight. And I promise I'm not gonna read these, I'm not gonna be very long about it. Um, we heard from a woman whose comment was, and I quote, I'm interested in that development, especially if it included larger three bedroom units for those of us who would like to downsize. I think that's something that we really to keep in mind in this community I often hear from um, people who want to move out of larger homes so sounds like this is a, a good um, size project for them um, I have comments from another resident who is concerned about studio and one bedroom apartments and whether or not they'll be practical for Elmhurst she's particularly concerned about um, people, young people starting out and that maybe this would be a solution for younger families or younger people, especially fresh out of college. Um, uh, concerns about storefront retail space and how great that would be. Uh, comments about green space particularly, considering the little space around this complex, um, the original design of Museum Square showed a beautiful manicured landscaped area around the building but when it was completed that there was none. Um, the developer got a little bit more favor to expand his project at the expense <coughs> of green space around the building. So I think this is a big concern for many residents. Um, this particular writer had her doubts about Market Square at first, but after walking through the courtyard in and between the buildings, it turned out nice after all. So uh, again, I think this is a, a top of mind for many people. Eco-friendly, is it sustainable and eco-minded? Um, perhaps solar power or water reclamation, sustainable landscaping if green space is being offered? What if Elmhurst made an effort to incorporate some of these forward-thinking concepts and demanded such from the developers? Um, comments about building height were quite prevalent. Building height is something <coughs> the developers seem to keep pushing. I'm not in favor of anything in that location taller than the complex at 3rd and Addison. Another writer, I think five to six stories is too tall. If the building's too tall, I don't think it will fit in well with the surrounding environment. Other than that, I like the idea of first floor retail. So I thought it was important to share some of those other comments. I think those will be more important in particular when we get to the evaluation of the RFPs to hold on to those comments. Did you have uh, other comments? Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that we're giving 
residents ample opportunity to be involved in discussions that are going to affect them long term. This building, as Alderman Leader is fond of saying, these buildings will be here for a long time. Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to kind of follow up on Alderman Pez's question or statement <coughs> and uh, C Assistant City Manager's cop response to that, and that being CBS Panera. Um, I don't want to, and I think we need to vet this further, get in the same circumstance that we had when we initially discussed Han Street and the um, gas station um, purchase became a linchpin to some degree of what we were doing and who we were pursuing um, um, going forward with that, that development at that time. So we need to definitely make sure that during this process we keep that in mind. Um, if anything north and or south is applicable to further development, I definitely think that's something we should keep our, keep our uh, minds open to. But with that said, I don't want it to um, pin us or corner us into one direction with one or two developers. Um, so we need to keep that in mind going throughout this whole process and when that would be applicable and when that discussion wouldn't be applicable. Alderman Leader. Um, regarding the uh, <coughs> Tracy Cross report, to be honest with you, I, I found it very disquieting and disturbing. Uh, but in all fairness, I will wait um, for the final report to be issued uh, before commenting further. Thank you. Okay. Um, I will use this opportunity to make a couple comments of my own. Uh, one is the uh, preliminary report is going to be presented on May 6th, but uh, is, uh, I don't assume any action is going to be taken on that night. No, actually, I think we'll move that because that's the night people get sworn in. It's, I think we'll st probably the meeting after that or maybe commit a whole meeting the week after that to start presentation. Yeah, that was, that's what I was going to suggest. There will be quite a bit going on and people will be, could be some new people. I'm sure there will be at least one. The second point I wanted to just throw out is that uh, I was looking at the valuation criteria um, and I sort of had two thoughts on that. One is that when we actually do the rating, Instead of having people rate, uh, for instance, parking solutions would be 10 points and architectural quality would be 15. So that instead of having a rating on 1 to 10 or 1 to 15, just do a flat 1 to 10 on each category and then multiply it by some factor so that those points are each weighted. Um, otherwise, I think we may get, in fact, even make it a 1 to 5 rating and then multiply it times the number of points. Is that confusing enough? Yes. <laughs> okay. I think I've succeeded then. Uh, so, for instance, if you had uh, eight points and you, you scored on a scale of one to five, each point would be worth 1.6 points for the total. Uh, so then you have the same one through five. So if someone thinks it's an excellent fully met or exceeded, it would be five. <coughs> if you think they completely missed the boat or didn't even propose, say, a parking solution would be a zero. Um, that would give one consistent scale, but if the higher math is too confusing, then we won't do that. The other thing I think we ought to look at is, um, I noticed that when we looked at the staff's suggested points, they were kind of rounded, so that if, uh, for instance, parking solutions came in at 8% and it was rounded to 10, we were sort of rounded to the closest five point. Um, I wonder if people have a concern that maybe we should just leave it closest to where the Council's uh, ratings actually came so that parking would be uh, get eight points, architectural quality would get 17, um, site layout would get nine as opposed to uh, trying to round it up and down because it may significantly change the, the result. And that's where it would tie into the one to five rating, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just a concept that we might look at. Uh, but that's something we will have to decide before we uh, <coughs> undertake our evaluation. Any other uh, thoughts or questions? All right, any closing comments, uh, Mr. Cobb? All right. I'll make, um, I'll make the corrections on there. I'll, I'll, I'll talk with Alderman Pez regarding the open space as far as what correction she'd like to see on that. And 
um, get the final RFP out so everybody can take a look at it and have any other comments. And maybe on that evaluation, maybe I'll put together those two different scenarios you talked about and sort of do the map on so people can see what that, how that would work out. And then we can decide on that when you can, when it's actually presented in physical form. All right. Uh, I think that'll be it then. We will adjourn the meeting of the committee to the whole and uh, committee meetings will start at uh, 7.30. Motion. Motion second. Uh, sorry, motion by Alderman York, second by Alderman Hipskin. All in favor? Say aye. Yeah, well, he's temporary. Aye.